Okay, so, oh, just a second. We're gonna need, we're gonna need this here in a second. Uh, lately, we've been talking about recovery from serious mental illness. And so kind of lessons I've learned in the, you know, more than 10 years now of ditching the mental illness diagnoses, also really maintaining my mental health and what's involved with that. And then working with people on that journey over the years. Last time we were talking about mental fitness. And I think still, even though mental fitness is about learning how to have any thought or feeling, I think we often approach that as the, oh, okay, like mental fitness is gonna be the secret special magic soap that I'm gonna use to clean away all of the mental illness. Like this is how I'm gonna finally win the battle with mental illness, I'm gonna use mental fitness. But it's so useful to understand that engaging with our brains in a battle around stuff in our heads we hate is losing the battle. It's so important on this journey to walk off the battlefield. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what that's all about. I'm gonna look at some common uh, challenges or reasons or pitfalls around that, but even the importance of dropping the concept of walking off the battlefield itself. The first thing I wanna emphasize is how important it is to recognize that if we define success as defeating experiences we hate, then we make experiences we hate necessary for happiness in life. Let's head over to the battlefield and I'll explain what this is all about. Okay, so this is the battlefield of life, obviously. Uh, and here we've got a little, you know, maybe it's um, a, little, a little depression, maybe a little intrusive thought, a little bit of uncertainty, not even, not even something you'd see as a problem. Just your kind of everyday average uncertainty and then this obviously uh, is you this is us and at first you know some you know the brain throws up some kind of intrusive thought or something and then we go and we do a bunch of compulsion some controlling some coping some avoiding and uh, we, we check for reassurance uh, we check online to see if anybody has the same symptoms and we're like, oh, I found somebody. Oh, and they got rid of it. Oh, okay, I'll get rid of this. I'm no longer worried about this. Uh, and we do a bunch more compulsions and boom, you know, we get rid of that. Right? We get rid of that uncertainty, that concern, and we are so happy. We are just so, so I'm trying to raise our arms here. There we go. So happy. We're so happy we defeated the bad thought. We defeated the bad feelings and now we feel good. It is so good. And so the brain, being the helpful brain that it is, it goes, oh, okay, well, if defeating that one little uh, bad experience was pretty good, then you're gonna love it when you defeat this experience. And then we see that and we're so upset and you know, we're all oh, the, can, can uh, mental illness themes change? Oh no, I thought I had defeated this. Why is it back? And we're very sad. And that cycle can just repeat again and again and again, because then maybe, yeah, we do a whole bunch of compulsions to defeat this, and maybe it's really difficult, and even maybe we'll, we'll quit some relationships and, and drop out of school and quit our job so we can just fight this, and then we'll, we'll defeat that one. Uh, but again, the brain is like, well, if you really like defeating that, I mean, I can give you even more uh, obsessions and difficult feelings. And oh, we are so sad. It helped me so much to see that there's no solving an intrusive thought. We're not, we're not defeating enemies on the battlefield in our heads. All we do when we get rid of some anxiety or we get rid of some intrusive thought, all we've done there is tell the brain, give me a bigger monster and the brain will supply one every single time. Another reason for walking off the battlefield is that it can start to define us. We can start to conflate our identity with defeating enemies in our heads, and we might start to build community around hating on brain stuff. And the issue with that is that if you actually want to get over this stuff and leave it behind, how are you going to do that when leaving behind the stuff you hate is also going to mean ditching part of your identity and your community. Let's head back to the battlefield. If your social media profiles, for instance, 
are about sharing your wrestling matches with monsters. You'll, you'll have to keep going into the swamp to find more monsters. It helped me so much. So as you know, some of you got into mental health advocacy, it helped me so much that right from the start, what I was sharing about was mental health. Even in the early years, uh, I wouldn't talk about symptoms, uh, intrusive thought, like the topics of intrusive thoughts and those kinds of things that I had gotten rid of. I really only wanted to make it about the helpful skills I was building. And that was so useful. This is something I find is so important to emphasize if people are looking to join a support group, whether that's in person or online, it's don't join a support group where the prerequisite for support is having a disaster. Because if you join a support group for people that get eaten by monsters, you're gonna have to keep getting eaten by monsters every week just to get support. Instead, it's so much more useful <laughs> to build support around skills we wanna keep. Uh, so the example I always use is swimming. We don't go and join a support group for drowning. We go and we learn how to swim because that's a skill we wanna keep in our lives. We wanna go and learn how to swim like a duck. That's something we'll always be able to grow and have in our lives. There's one other reason, really important reason, why we walk off the battlefield. And that's because you probably tried everything, right? You've tried everything to get rid of anxiety and the intrusive thoughts and the depression and the depersonalization and the paranoia and the voices. You've tried it all. Have you considered that's the problem? I so often get messages from people or I see posts online where they list out like how many therapists they've seen and all of the drugs they've been taking and the supplements and the five hour day meditation regime pouring essential oils up their nose, paying for the team of like the most expensive therapist, all sorts of different kinds of therapy they can find, you know, getting chips in the brain, doing the TMS, the TMI, the TLC, gabapentin, gabba kappa gabba, the ayahuasca retreat, snorting donuts, crystal suppositories, watching my videos again and again and again and again. And they're shocked that the brain stuff they hate only keeps getting worse and there's more of it. But that's because all of that fixing and controlling brain stuff you hate is only teaching the brain to give you more of the stuff you hate. It's the classic contamination compulsion pattern. Right? The more we try to scrub and clean to get rid of the, the bad feeling, in this case, trying to scrub and clean our minds, the more contaminated we feel, the more we have to do controlling compulsions to fix and clean the experiences we hate. So what do we do instead of hating and fighting brain stuff and putting that at the center of the work? You know, we walk off the battlefield. So we, you know, we, we completely leave it. We have to go and put something else at the center. And, and I know this, <laughs> this sounds so uh, paradoxical and contradictory because I'm saying, well, how do, how do we recover? Uh, from mental illness, uh, we don't. We even ditch the idea. We go and, and we build skills around things we really want to do in life. And that's, it's not even about, oh, I, oh, I want to go build these skills to you know, fight and control brain stuff. It's actually about like, really putting something at the center. So <laughs> we'll represent that with the duck. So you know, saying, hey, you know, the thing I really want to do in life is just get really great at cooking food for myself and nourishing myself. You know, when you pick a, an anchor like that, you, you end up having to, of course, cut out compulsions because if you're gonna say, how do I nourish myself well? Is it gonna involve all sorts of compulsions, all sorts of checking, all sorts of controlling, all sorts of avoiding? No, but we don't have to make it about that stuff. That stuff just is not involved with nourishing ourselves well. Or if you say, you know what, I want to grow a business. And we say, okay, well, how do I grow that business well? And yeah, like the, the old compulsions, all the fighting and controlling and avoiding experiences we don't like, that, that won't be part of building a business well. It's gonna be about developing the skills that help us communicate the way we wanna communicate, that help us give the value we wanna to give to people. 
we walk off the battlefield and maybe even describing it as walking off the battlefield isn't the best term because that still puts the battlefield at the center. It's uh, walking towards your duck, whatever your duck is, walking towards what you care about. It's about making that shift from getting, where right? we're always trying to like get control, get reassurance, get certainty, get rid of thoughts. It's making that shift from getting to giving. I'm really asking, like, what do you want to give to yourself? What do you want to give to the world? What do you want to grow and build? And it helps so much to make the work about that, to build our identity around those things we want to keep, those skills we want to keep growing in our lives, to build community around supporting those things we want to keep in our lives. So what's, what's the duck that you're going to move towards? What's that thing you want to give to the world? Thank you.